Hello friends. Uh, so we are uh, going to begin. A uh, very very good morning to all of you. Thank you all for uh, joining us. I am Vinel and uh, I lead marketing communications at uh, Renewsys India. Renewsys is a global leader in solar PV manufacturing and one of the first integrated manufacturers of solar PV modules and its key components that is encapsulants, back sheets and solar PV cell. And uh, I would like to welcome all of you today. We have uh, participants who have joined us from Nigeria, Ghana, Benin, Togo and India and we're so happy to have all of you join us in this uh, series of webinars that we've been running. And uh, today is a special day because uh, this webinar uh, has been specially designed for our friends in the ECOWAS region and uh, we have with us a special guest as well. That is Mr. Segun Adaju. Welcome, Mr. Adaju. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of Mr. Adaju, he is the president of the Renewable Energy Association of Nigeria, and he is also the chief energizing officer of Consistent Energy, a renewable energy company having its headquarters in Lagos. Apart from the above roles, he also handles various roles to foster the growth of renewable energy in the ECOWAS region and especially in Nigeria. Mr. Adaju is a strong supporter of high quality products in all his projects. And in fact, he's a banker who has turned into a renewable energy uh, reference person in the ECOWAS region, serving the sub-Saharan region in multiple ways. We also have uh, in attendance with us from Renewsys, uh, Mr. Arjun Kotapalli, who heads uh, quality for Renewsys India, and Mr. Prasanna Kupuswami, who I think most of you have uh, interacted with and uh, must be knowing, as he heads sales for the ECOWAS region and has a long association with Renewsys India as well. So without uh, further ado, I'll uh, invite Mr. Prasanna to please uh, start this uh, webinar. Just uh, one request before we begin, kindly mute all your microphones and uh, if you have a bandwidth uh, problem, I would recommend uh, switching your uh, camera off as well so that you can get uh, better reception during the webinar. Uh, handing over to you, Prasanna. Thank you, Vinal. Thank you. Good morning, all. Today, we have a majority of participants from Nigeria. So we welcome you all and Ekaro. Uh, also, we have uh, customers, as mentioned uh, by uh, Vinal. We have from Senegal, Benin, Niger. And for them, we welcome you all and bonjour and merci beaucoup for your participation today. Finally, we have friends joined from India. For them, uh, we say namaste and we welcome you all for this wonderful webinar, which has been uh, you know, uh, made available by Renewsys. We have today uh, welcoming Mr. Signal Raju. Uh, he's a, he's a, a, a chief energizing officer and president of Green. He's the keynote uh, address speaker. And we have Mr. Arjun and Vinal and Raja also on the uh, India side factory and corporate offices. I welcome our participants for sparing your time on your busy schedule today. By end of the seminar, you will be getting enlightened today on proper handling, maintaining and managing solar panels as per industry practices. I especially welcome Mr. Sigunar Raju, President of Green and Chief Energizing Officer of Consistent Energy. Mr. Adaju has been deeply contributing to the renewable energy industry and its stakeholders in Nigeria. Mr. Adaju will share his keynote address on this important topic of webinar today. I praise the Almighty for giving an excellent opportunity for Renewsys to be with Nigeria, which has attained 60 glorious years post-independence and continuously improving with its young and innovative population. As mentioned by Vinal, Renewsys is part of NP Group, uh, which has been in Nigeria for the past six decades with businesses in metal, flexible packing, printing, construction chemicals, cement, roofing sheet, and FMCG. Today, we have a most important topic of handling, installing, maintaining the solar panels. Since we could notice a significant amount of solar panels and systems are installed and don't live up to the expectations due to multiple reasons. One of the other reasons 
is improper installation or maintenance or handling. If you travel to any southern part in Nigeria, for example, like Lekki or to Ibadan or Potakot, you can see the rooftop panels are installed on sheet metal roofs with no or limited access and also installed with shadow during most part of the day, either or fully or partially shadowed. Also, in most cases, the panels are transported in certain ways, which will damage the panels as the silicon cell in the panel is only about 200 micron thickness. So hence, handling the solar panel, starting from receiving the panel to installing, maintaining, needs standard operational guidelines as per the manufacturer for reliable service and life of the product. Mr. Arjun, head of quality from our factory, is going to shed light on this with deep technical insights. Now I'm 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 transferring to Mr. Sigine Daju for uh, his uh, keynote address and the importance of the topic, sir. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you uh, for your introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the program together. Uh, my name is Shagun Adaju. I operate from Nigeria, but I also have a keen interest in the African, you know, markets, uh, cutting across the West Africa to East and Southern Africa. Um, we all know the importance of renewable energy in creating energy access for Africans. Um, out of over 600 million, if I'm correct, um, that is not connected to grid electricity in Africa, bulk of which, uh, you know, they, they, they exist in the sub-Saharan part of Africa. We know the energy resource that Africa has from sun, and we know the potential of what we can generate and how we can power ourselves using solar. Um, now there's a, there's a lot of developments that is happening in this sector, in the region. Um, several projects are coming up. I'll give some instances about Nigeria, where we've seen both government, private sector, and development partners promoting a lot of projects. And I can tell you, bulk of the renewable energy technologies that is deployed in the region is solar. I can comfortably say between 60 to 70 percent of energy, uh, renewable energy generated in this region is solar. Why? Because solar is, um, has achieved scale, is a proven technology, it is easily deployed virtually anywhere in Africa, um, unlike other technology that you have to deal with, uh, um, you know, resource, for example, biomass, how do you collect? Uh, if it is small hydro, you need some small flowing river beside you. So solar um, is the most um, common technology that is deployed. I've also had the opportunity sometime uh, about seven, eight years ago, I took a study tour to India and I visited almost all part of India. And I was just wondering, uh, we share similar um, climatic you know, conditions maybe and others with this great nation. Why can't Africa also learn uh, the projects that have been deployed in that part of the world? But today, Africa, and particularly Nigeria, is, is moving very fast on deploying solar technology. Now, my experience in this space, coming from banking and um, getting becoming an investor in the sector, is I've seen instances where solar solutions don't work, uh, principally because um, there's little knowledge about how to handle them. Um, Mr. Prasanna talked about transportation, simple movement of panels from one location to the other. Uh, secondly, my, maybe even installation. Um, I see some rooftops installation. And of course, you know that the, uh, the orientation uh, is not proper. Um, shading will probably reduce the efficiency. And I even see some pictures where people might even be won't be working on, 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 on panels being laid. I mean, so basically, how do we handle solar panels? We determine how much efficiency we're able to generate and how much power we're able to provide for our communities and for our nation and also for Africa. Uh, also, the issue of uh, maintenance. Okay, so you, you see some rooftops 
and then you just see um, you know dust covering all over the whole place, and nobody's thinking of um, cleaning. Okay, so I believe this webinar is right and timely, and it will educate all of us on you know some um, knowledge of what we need to know about how to handle uh, this properly. It's like you have a car. If you handle your car properly very well, you service at the right time, you wash it at the proper time, uh, and then you, you are sure it will serve you. You should not have any fear that it will break down on the way. That's exactly what um, uh, solar facility is all about, and I believe that's what we're going to hear this morning from the team. On that note, I'll say um, I welcome everyone. I look forward to an exciting time. Uh, many of us also learn from the experiences of the experts here in the room, and then we will improve our services and our operation. Thank you and welcome. So I hand over to Mr. Prasanna. Please take over from from there, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, Sigino Raju. It was a uh, wonderful uh, uh, introduction and uh, a keynote uh, from your side, and uh, we uh, really expect uh, very good information from Mr. Arjun, who is uh, from our factory and uh, he is uh, deeply uh, involved in the manufacturing, testing, and quality assurance uh, from our factory side. Arjun, over to you. Thanks, Prasanna. Uh, good morning, uh, Egos. Today, we are going to cover about uh, unloading, unpacking, storage, installation, Lightning and uh, earthing and lightning production, production, cleaning, general information and safety. And last of this webinar, we'll have some question answers. Coming to Renuces, yes, Renuces, India's first integrated manufacturer of key components. As you know, in solar modules, the key components are EVA, backsheet, solar cells, and we are backward backward integrator of this major components for solar modules. And it's an NP group. Uh, Renesis is, is basically from NP group and we have nearly 60 years of experience in manufacturing. And I think uh, all know this slide. The NP group, we have uh, various businesses in Nigeria, starting from cables, metal packaging, uh, soaps, co cosmetics, flexible packing, Construction cements. Uh, apart from Arjun adding uh, here a few uh, of this part because uh, this is very specific to Nigeria, uh, where you can see uh, the Avon uh, Crown Caps, which is a uh, you know a long organization which is doing uh, metal packing in Nigeria. Apart from that, you have uh, you know the Prime Pack, which is making the printing chemicals and printing materials, and you have. Uh, so many other uh, activities in Nigeria, you would have come across some products like uh, Top Bond, Top Jit. These are the products come from the NP group and we help from the same group and we have our facility in India to manufacture the solar panels. Ajay, next slide please. Yes. Is it clear? Yeah. This is global. So now, yes. Yeah. So, so what happens is now, if you could see this, uh, the manufacturing facility for Renuces is based out of India, and we have our uh, facilities in uh, Dubai. We have our sales offices in Dubai and with warehouses. Apart from that, we have a huge office in South Africa and Nigeria, and then we have representatives in Europe and US, and we have offices in uh, other countries too, and representations, and we have our installations in across about 60 countries right now. If you look at this, is a journey of Renuces uh, where we started in 2011. Uh, the background of starting Renuces is that uh, we have been experiencing completely into the polymer and packing side where the complete products have been the back and for the EVA and the back sheet. Based on that polymer experience, Renuces have initiated a factory to manufacture EVA in Bangalore in 2012 in India. From there, 
it has been uh, the next year it has been added to the back sheet facility of 1.8 gigawatt and then we have started exporting in 2014 for the eva and then we have gone in acquiring a new solar company uh, uh, called solar semiconductor india and then we started it was just a 80 megawatt semi automatic line and then renesis management took decision of completely converting it into a fully automated line you can always see the uh, facility on the youtube links which we can share it to you and from there we have graduated to 750 megawatt right now of manufacturing the solar panel and 130 megawatt of solar cell and recently we have even announced the expansion of back sheet and eva manufacturing facility so in totality we are emerging as a completely integrated solar panel manufacturing company and having plans to go for higher efficiency plan panels and adding capacities to more than 1 gigawatt so photos thanks prasanna uh, yes uh, in uh, a brief introduction about the company uh, we have a product center which is we are having seven climatic chambers in this first in india and our lab is certified with intertech uh, uh, intertech laboratories and we are capable of doing uh, test for modules three times the iec where we we do three times the iec to see our product can withstand for 25 years plus years in the field now coming to our main topic today's topic uh, today in this webinar we are going to cover unloading unpacking storage and installation at the and lighting production cleaning general information and safety today the first topic unloading and unpacking basically the unloading will happen with two uh, uh, two devices two devices firstly is forklift and hydra once on the receipt of the modules we need to identify uh, we need to verify whether the whether we received the right product right packing list is pasted on the box and right serial numbers were delivered once you you, you confirm all the details are right then to unload use a forklift or a hydra always always move the full pack via forklift and select the forklift according to size and weight of the goods if 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 the forks length is less than 1/3 of the uh, of the box extend the sleeves should be fit on the forklift in order to avoid the container been dumping or dropping unloading boxes using hydra the hose rope of the crane unloading the material should be nylon sling wire ropes is not allowed why we say wire ropes are not allowed if we use wire ropes ropes it may leave some uh, stress onto the module which may damage the frame so it is always recommended to use only nylon sling while unloading using uh, unloading boxes from the container from the truck using hydra before lifting the length of the sling should be evenly balanced so that the box will not topple and the center of gravity should be maintained so that the box will not tilt while lifting from the container from the truck once the unloading is from the container the pack should be always kept on flat surface and even surface and once you unload from the truck the uh, the panel should be kept on neatly safe distance with between the boxes and be recommend to keep at least 30 cm distance between the boxes do not stack pack boxes more than two boxes one above the other if the pallets are temporarily stored outside then the then the external protection is required to place on the boxes basically we we we, we should cover the boxes with tarpaulin or any plastic film so that the moisture or the rain will not affect the modules under its under packed condition now once you once you unload once you receive the material check the material and unload the material from the truck then the unpacking starts then unpacking of the module should be always done in vertical manner by two persons as shown in the figure always care should be taken to avoid falling of modules one on the other inside the packing box once you remove one or two modules from the packing box there will be space left over in the packing box and the modules may tilt in the box itself so you should be ensuring that properly the module should be taken out from the box remove the plastic strip using the correct tool 
and make sure that the inside strip is it's not cut for the standard packing box while removing the box. Cut the inner strip and push the modules towards the wall or a, or, or a pole for supporting the module so that it will not fall under loading condition. That means when you when you remove a module from the box, the box will left with some empty space and the modules are free to move. So you should always move all the modules stack to one side of the wall or the packing box or a wall. Then you slowly remove one after the other module. With this, we covered the un unloading and unpacking. Now it is storing and installation. Storing, basically storing are of two types, temporary storage, long-term storage. In temporary storage, ensure that once you open modules from the box, you should keep the modules on a pallet within uh, on a pallet and above the pallet, you should keep a, ca a carpeted sheet or the, at least minimum three play on that the module should be placed and the glass should be facing towards the towards the ground as shown in the figure if you if you're planning to store modules for long long term duration then the whole pack or the pallet should be kept indoor and under the under the shelter and protect from the environment like wind rain etc put the right up according to the instruction on the packing box and do not place one above the other pallet no more not more than two pallets are allowed on a pile you can see some images here. This is the wrong way of packing and the right way of the packing is we can see in the green uh, green tick mark. Coming to installation, model should be firmly fixed in a place in a manner to withstand the extreme loads, including wind and snow. Basically, once you design your structure uh, at the site, you should also check for the what is the wind load at that site and if there is any slow load present in the site before, before selecting the structure. Once you select the structure and do some basic STAD analysis, then the appropriate hardware should be selected. And we recommend, as a renewal, we recommend to use SS304 material to fix module to the structure. And we recommend M6 bolt watcher, again, uh, and watcher and spring watcher and nut. That is, that is the uh, fixing mechanism for the module to the structure. And always remember the module should not be installed under shaded condition. If modules were installed under shaded condition, not only the power, your power generation will get dropped, not only the power, your module will also degrade over time. And you should keep minimum 7 mm gap between two modules as you know the module will expand because of thermal expansion in the modules in the frame. Basically in the frame, it will expand around 7 mm during extreme hot conditions. So the minimum clearance should be given 7 mm between modules to modules. And it is highly recommended to remove transparent plastic film comes along with the frame before installing the modules. If we don't remove plastic film, which is which is on the frame, it will get dust accumulated and you you uh, and and the modules look uh, ugly uh, over a period of time. In some of the module handling and wiring, once you install the modules on the roof, the cables and connectors should not be left on the shed. During rainy season, the, the, the water may sweep in into the connectors and it will it may damage your connectors and cables. So you may get fault alarm in the inverter because of insulation failure. And while installation, the cable should not be bent the cable should be bent with 2D radius. If suppose uh, we are using 4 square mm cable, then the radius should be 8D, 8, 8 radius. And always the module should be handled by 2% as shown in the figure. And these are the some of the site images. Of course, it's basically from India. Uh, some of the uh, site images where we should not place a uh, module one above the other. It may leave scratch or it may damage your glass and frame. And we saw some of in some sites, the people are leaving some buckets of cleaning uh, uh, items or uh, articles on the frame on the module, which may create hotspot. At the same time, it will damage the modules. It is not recommended and we should not step on the module or we should not sit on the module after the installation or during the installation. 
Now another important topic, this we cover uh, storage and installation. Installation, we saw in many sites, the people, uh, the, uh, the EPC players are not doing uh, earthing, proper earthing for this, for this complete installation, but it is highly recommended to do earthing for the complete site. First, because of safety and the second, because of some reliability or performance of the modules. Basically, what is earthing? To connect the metallic parts of the electrical installation to earth is called earthing or grounding. All the PV modules should be grounded as per local regulations. Requirement for earthing, why, why really we require to do earthing? Yes, we require to do earthing to avoid uh, uneven potential across the installation. If there is uneven potential across the installation, it is a safety hazard and you may feel shock if you touch some object in, uh, at the site. And protecting a thing so that there is no there is a fault current path to flow. If there is some fault current in the system, there should be a path, clear path that the current should flow to the ground. And the, and the potential between ground and the metallic part in at the site should be zero. To avoid lightning production, to avoid solar uh, modules from PID. This is another another big uh, disadvantage. If you don't do for uh, go for earthing, there will be a PID effect on the modules. We'll cover in the upcoming slides what is PID. And you should also design the earthing and ensure that it should be below one ohm. When we test the earth resistance, it should be less than one ohm. And for earthing, we recommend to use GI pipes or uh, maintenance free earth electrode should be used for, for earthing. And coming to what is PID, if, if we don't uh, ground up panels at the site, the modules may, may go for PID, PID degradation. And the PID is potential induced degradation. It's also known as PID. It is a performance degradation in PV modules. And it is mostly observed, commonly observed in the sites where there is no grounding or earthing. What is PID? PID is, is nothing but a high potential between uh, the frame and the ground. If the high and when we don't see PID effect in lesser voltage, uh, lesser volt, uh, system voltage systems like say 600 and less, but we see PID effect on, on the system voltage where there is 1000 and above. And, and PID is nothing but the high relative voltage forcing the sodium ions on the glass to diffuse from glass to EVA and thereby EVA to cell. If the sodium ions are diffused from, from glass to EVA and through EVA through cells, then we will see a significant drop in VOC of the module and we will see dark spots in EL imaging and which will also affect the uh, fill factor in the modules. Now, what is the reason why this PID affects? Yes, first, obviously earthing. If you don't do earthing, PID will affect. The second, low quality raw materials used for building a module, for assembling a module. Basically EVA, backsheet and solar cells. And you know that in Renusis in, in India, we make EVA, backsheet and solar cells in-house. So we have total control on quality of this material, which we, which we built our own cells and we assemble into the module. And further to PID, temperature and humidity also further increase PID effect in solar modules. And the way to prevent PID, first, yes, we need to completely grounded our system. And it is important, it's also important to select that solar modules are made with PID resistant material. Like EVA should be PID free and cells should be PID free or PID resistant. And lightning production, yes, it is also uh, recommended that lightning arrestor should be installed at the site. The purpose of lightning protection system is to protect system from lightning currents and lightning is lightning arrest is nothing but it will it will uh, the lightning power system is simply interact and guides the current harmlessly to the ground via low impedance path when we see thunders or or any uh, thunders the high use current or the sparks develop in the sky will may will uh, the high, uh, lightning arrestor will attract that and it will it will pass through the ground with 
zero potential. And basically, the three main components in lightning arrester, air terminal, conductor, ground termination. Lightning production requirement depends on your in your configuration, your system size, your in your area, geographical location, where you are. If you're close to seashore area, uh, or uh, then there'll be more chances of lightning arrest, uh, more chances of lightning in the air. You should check that and decide which lightning arrest is best suits for your site. And of course, you should also check for the local regulations which are applicable. Coming to cleaning and general info, general safety. Cleaning uh, instructions. It is recommended to inspect modules for cracks, damaged cells, joints before cleaning the modules. It is highly recommended it's, if there is a glass broken, cables damaged, then you, you should start cleaning the modules. And it is also recommended to use proper PPE, personal protection equipments before cleaning. Types and in the water, what you should use for cleaning should be RO water. It's an ideal option. If RO water is not available, tap water or rainwater can be used. But the tap water or rainwater should have low mineral content. The hardness should be less than 75 milligrams per liter. And cleaning time, it is recommended to clean modules during load light or early in the morning or late in the evening. But first time to clean in order to avoid from uh, electrical shocks. While if you clean modules during uh, uh, during daytime, there's a high chances that you may get shock and and glass may broken because of thermal stress on the glass and water pressure water should not exceed 35 bar at the nozzle level if if water pressure is more when and when you're cleaning the modules it may it may create some micro cracks on on silicon solar cell and the water temperature it's always recommended to use the water temperature should be same like module temperature and the temperature difference between water and the module should not exceed 20 degrees. If it's exceed 20 degrees, then the glass may experience thermal shock and glass may break. Coming to cleaning again, uh, removing of suborn bars. If you if you find any uh, dirt marks which is not going, then use a soft sponge, a microfiber cloth or non-conductive and non-abrasive brush. It is recommended to soak that point for some time before using a sponge or brush. And after repeated cleaning of the same spot over a period of time, that the spot will 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 go off. And it is it is not recommended to clean back sheet of the modules unless you see a dirt or back sheet uh, some uh, some dust particles attached to the back sheet. Then it is recommended to clean. Or uh, in generally, cleaning of back sheet is not required. And cleaning of back sheet requires a skill. We should not use any sharp objects while cleaning the back sheet. Black sheet is basically a polymer. If you use any sharp object to clean back sheet, it may it may damage your back sheet or it may scratch and it may sometimes it may remove the outer layer from the back sheet. And never climb modules while cleaning. General information and safety. This uh, do not damage or scratch the back sheet. Do not, not clean the glass with chemicals. Work only under dry condition with dry uh, modules and tools. Be, be sure to complete all the modules should be grounded. Do not stack more than one pallet and the maximum height is two pallets. The severe stacking may cause uh, stress on the module and make it may cause product, product damage. Do not use junction box to hold or transport modules. This is the common practice what we see. What what we see? This is the common practice what we see in generally all the sites. The people uh, people carry modules with the junction box cables. It is highly not recommend. It is not recommended. It is not suggested to move modules with holding cables or junction box. The junction box may peel off from the back sheet. Do not stand or step on the modules during the lifetime of the modules. 
Do not dismantle, modify, dump the modules or remove any part or label installed by the manufacturer. It is not recommended to remove any label or anything which is pasted by manufacturer. Do not drill holes on the frame or the glass of the module. Do not treat back sheet or front surface of the module with paint or adhesives. Do not and, and do not project or uh, concentrate light on the module. Uh, this piece saw so in some sites people are concentrating uh, some light on the modules. It is not recommended to concentrate any any uh, light onto the module. It may create hotspot and it may it may uh, it will be a safety hazard and the back sheet may burn for a period of time. Do not use any uh, change the bypass diodes in the junction box. Do, do not disconnect modules under load. Modules should not be disconnected under load as it is generating current. It will, it will release a spark and it may damage the connectors cables. When carrying modules, minimum two persons should carry it by its frame. You should only carry by frame and you should wear non-slippery gloves, gloves to avoid slipping or cutting. And do not support them. Do not leave the modules unsupported, uh, unsecured prior to installation. The model should be if if you're planning to store modules outside for long duration, you should ensure that the modules are are are, uh, are tied uh, are tied with a rope or with a uh, strip pet strip in order to see that the modules are in a bulk in a bulk. For example, if wind wind causes my modules may fly over. Uh, and it is if you if at all any damage models are received, customers are requested to intimate renewses along with the photos of, of the damaged pallets on the vehicle for insurance claim purpose on the same day of the receipt. For local sales in Nigeria, where the scope of transportation is with the customer, the panels can can be inspected at the ISOL warehouse renewses industries. Uh, Nigeria Limited prior to dispatch. So once you once you pick the material from our warehouse, you should inspect the materials and once you satisfied, then you should take out the materials. If you see any damage or any any packing damage or any module damage, then and there itself you should inform to our concern uh, concern person at the warehouse. A broken a module with broken glass or the back sheet damage cannot be repaired at the site and and, you, and it cannot and any surface in the model can produce electrical shock while doing that activity. So it is not recommended to to change the glass or or peel off the back sheet from the module. Broken or damaged modules must be handled carefully and deposit and depo, disposed properly. Broken glass can be sharp and it may cause injury if you handle without an appropriate protective equipment. So with this, this is the last slide. Uh, with this, we are done with the presentation. But just to recap everything, yes, once you once you receive material at the site, unloading and unpacking, unloading you should identify, you should uh, figure out that whether you received the right material or not by seeing on the packing list which is pasted outside the cotton. With that, you will know whether you received you what order, what material you ordered and what material you received. Once you confirm that, yes, with using hydra or forklift. You can unload the material seeing that center of gravity and taking necessary precautions. You can unload the material. Once you unload the material, you should unpack the material. While unpacking the material, you should also ensure that minimum two persons should be there while unpacking the material. And be careful while cutting this pet strip. Once you cut the strip, then the box is loose. The modules may fall uh, either way. So you should, the two persons should hold uh, modules firmly then cut the strip and take out the modules outside and the second topic storage and installation in storage basically two types of storage long term storage short term storage in short term storage yes the module should be placed horizontally on a wooden pallet and on the wooden pallet you should be placing minimum three play cotton or three play uh, paper on that the glass should be facing towards the earth that is towards the pallet side 
and you can place minimum 25 pal 25 modules one above the other for short term storage for long term storage yes you can you can store in the same way but the same pallet should be moved to the uh, indoor uh, indoor where there is no direct sunlight or there is no direct rain or wind speed affecting the modules that's for long term storage and coming to installation yes in installation you should maintain we, the modules should be installed in shadow free area at and it should uh, uh, the minimum distance between two models should be 7 mm you know to avoid thermal expansions <coughs> and and the module should be should be uh, uh, grounded properly in order to we saw that it's it's safety hazard first and second the module will degrade if you don't do grounding properly and ba basically it is of pid potential induced degradation and the second thing you should also do a lightning arrester lightning arrested to the complete site so that you mo you modules your system is protected from lightning and coming to cleaning yes you can clean modules with your tap water or normal running water but you should see that uh, the uh, it should be low mineral content 75 mg per liter and nozzle pressure should not be 35 bar 35 bar, 35 bar and you should also not should not use any sharp objects while cleaning the modules and coming to general in, uh, general information and safety yes we should not step on the modules we should not leave any objects on the modules and we should not disconnect the modules under the load or under the working condition so this is this uh, overall summary of the ppt today uh, thanks uh, and and now the form is open for uh, question and answers thank you thank you so much arjun um, i think we have our uh, first question uh, ready here mr emmanuel uh, he has raised his hand if you can just uh, ask your question um, thanks for the presentation um, can you hear me yes great so um, i'm more concerned about your return policy um now you um selling stacks on pallets and then you know they are in packs and then packs on pallets and assuming i'm buying large quantities of this um sometimes even in those packs there could be damages cracks on the screens and stuff like that but you're insisting that um these pictures were taken in the truck i wouldn't have the time to be checking each of these cartons you know while this pallet while i'm on offloading this um this 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 uh, um the, the modules right so i i see no reason why if i why your warranty or your return policy ends with the truck you know do, do you get what i'm trying to say i i i can't be checking each of those cartons to find out whether there is a damage here or a damage there maybe when i want to use these things i might then find out that something has been wrong somehow or somewhere so who bears that um that cost or in in such a, a circumstances or circumstances yeah. mr emmanuel uh, prasanna here um uh, so uh, for this uh, i would like to answer so what happens is now uh, what we do is that when we are getting it in from india uh, uh, you know as a source of supply and then we bring it in a for you know containers and it gets downloaded to our uh, facility here okay when it goes from the local transportation from uh, renuses nigeria to any part of nigeria okay we request the customer to do the inspection at our warehouse because most cases we don't do the shipping part of it because shipping within nigeria is uh, quite a challenging one provided if i'm going to sign up a contract with you where i'm going to give the deliveries for example you are based in abuja or you are based in potakot i can always deliver it provided i have to take a clear uh, insurance policy for that if you are going to do the transportation you need to also take a transportation insurance for that that is what the slide clearly lets us know okay so inspection of the product we are open for it in the renuses warehouse in nigeria okay we can show you the panels you can show you the pallets we know we don't have any problem but beyond if it goes my from my warehouse then i don't want to own a responsibility because it is a transportation sometimes it doesn't happen on pallets 
Okay, there are some customers who ask for 50 panels, 20 panels from Abuja. Then I'm sending it from some local transportation. So those cases, we cannot take the responsibility of that. But at our warehouse, we are 100% responsible for the 100% quality and no damage panel to be delivered to you. Hope I'm answered to you. Okay, yeah, I, I get that. But I'm looking at a distance, you see. Um, if I'm in Abuja, I can't be coming down to your warehouse every day because yeah. I will get 50 panels. So I oh, perfectly am hoping right. that you need to provide yeah, that. I, 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 I agree with you. I agree with you. See, this case is like this. Uh, for example, it is like this. Now, when I'm sending it from here, I can take the photographs of the panel for you. Okay. If it is in a small quantity, if it is a larger quantity, I can take the pallet photographs for you and share it with you before I'm going to dispatch. Okay. And if it is going to be a bulk dispatch, one truck, I'm going to send it directly exclusively for you. Then I can definitely take a travel uh, insurance for that and send you. So we are all covered. Okay. So the, the road conditions, you know, in Nigeria, in certain cases, we have challenges. So if it gets broken in between, then we cannot also bear the cost of it. It's, a, it's an expensive one. So at my end of warehouse, I'm fine. And again, if you want to get it transported to Abuja, then we can take a transport insurance and take it for. Okay, if the transportation is my scope, I can do the transport transportation insurance. If the transportation is in your scope, then you can do the insurance for that. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Manuel, that's fine. Well, I, I yeah. think um, I would advise possibly you look at extending your warranty period, just a feedback. Um, you shouldn't end with the unloading of loading and things, you know. Um, the warranty period might need to be extended. So we can, I can't be, I can't be checking it. Like I said, if I'm on, if I get 50 pallets, I can't be checking each cartons in each pallet to know whether this is good or this is bad or this is that, that and those. Most times it's until when I want to use it. So if I'm to do business with you, I expect some kind of um, leverage and understanding and looking for how best we can handle such situations so that you don't just dump all the burdens on me. Supposing these problems came from your warehouse or maybe in transit before it gets to me, I might not know. So. It's just a feedback, no, though. You no, might no, need to no, pro no problem. I, I got your point. So when it goes to a 50 pallet transaction kind of a thing, definitely we will be putting it in a truck, and the truck will be definitely insured, and we will have the terms discussed before we do. So we don't have a problem with that. We can handle it. We can give you the support. Okay, then fine. Thank you. Then. Thank you. Any other question? Yeah, one of the important point I wanted to mention uh, on uh, Arjun's uh, presentation was that on the uh, installation of the panel and uh, on the uh, load calculations on the wind loads and other things. So what happens is in Nigeria, if you could uh, see closely, there are a lot of uh, Hermiton winds happen in about two to three months time, but too much of dust and a heavy velocity happens. So uh, as Arjun was mentioning, there should be a 7 mm gap that is not only for the thermal expansion, it also allows the wind to pass through the panel. Yes, you're right, Prasun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But uh, but if if it is a, a, a decent size uh, system, better they yeah. should go for a start analysis before finalizing the structure. Yes. That's true. That's true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, any more questions to uh, Arjun? We can uh, uh, take his support and uh, Mr. Raju also can uh, throw us some more light uh, if anybody requires any kind of a calc uh, you know, idea about it. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, Mr. Adaju, would you like to add uh, something at the end, uh, towards the end of the presentation? I think uh, his microphone is still uh, unmuted.
Um, Arjun, uh, while we wait for uh, more questions from the participants, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, difficult stains, uh, cleaning difficult stains of panels? What should the procedure be? Yes. Uh, first, we should we should stain that uh, mark with the with we should soak with that mark in the water for some time. After that, we should use a sponge or a fiber cloth uh, and we should rub that uh, stain. That is recommended, but in one go, it may not go. In one go, it may not, at one time of cleaning, it may not go, but we should repeatedly cleaning that, then it will go definitely. But we should not use any chemicals or any, uh, any uh, detergents to clean the modules. Uh, if you use any chemicals or detergent, it will it will uh, affect your ARC coated on the glass. ARC coating is nothing but anti-reflective coating, which is on the glass. Uh, it it will damage, and few chemicals will also damage the frame for the, the module. So it is always recommended to clean modules with water, and that too it's only a repeated to cleaning. We can uh, get rid of that marks or stop on marks on the module. Hope I answered. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Arjun. We have uh, another question here. How often should uh, panels be cleaned uh, in, in different climates, like in uh, in the summer, in uh, winters? Is there a pattern how often they should be cleaned? Yes, yeah, it depends on soiling, basically. Uh, now, you can set a frequency by seeing the the soiling on the modules. This is very easy if you have a uh, if you have a, uh, a pyranometer or a, uh, a pyranometer at the side. Once you see the pyranometer, when you calculate PR ratio, the PR ratio will go uh, uh, beyond the expectation. That means your pyranometer is dust got accumulated on the pyranometer, so your PR ratio is increasing. That is the first way of an easy way of uh, seeing whether a site really required cleaning. And the second thing, you can see a generation fall by day by day, and you can set a frequency. Let's say, suppose say we cleaned uh, once in a week, and we see uh, every suppose the frequency is every Sunday we clean modules, and Monday if you see the generation gone high, uh, and 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 slowly it's come down in uh, to the Saturday, then Sunday again you clean. So that one week is is good enough. And if you see no, if you clean in between around Wednesday or Thursday and you're seeing some improvements in generation, then you should change your frequency to uh, uh, three days, once in every three days. It depends on the generation, how much you are getting from the plant. And, and after after working on one or two months, you will get to know what should be the frequency of cleaning the modules. But it is recommended generally, uh, like Nigeria, like African countries and India, where there's a dust prone area some more, it is recommended to clean once in three days. Thanks. Thanks, Arjun. Uh, do we have any questions uh, from our guests? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, please proceed. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, regarding the spacing between the panel, I uh, involved in one installation of recent that we use that site for me like car park. And when during the installation in between the panels, we use silicon gel because we don't want any leakage in case of rainfall. Is that one advisable? Yes, uh, it's not as advisable to uh, fill that gap with uh, silicon materials. Why? Because the uh, frame will expand. When it, when it goes for extreme high temperatures, it's not recommended. We should not fill that uh, gap with, with uh, silica materials. But you can you can uh, see and uh, install modules close to each other. Okay. But you should not fill that gap. Basically. At some points, we use uh, this aluminum foil to cover the top because we don't want, according to the specification, that we don't want any linkage. Is that one also advisable? Aluminum foil to cover the space between the two panels. Yes, uh, uh, yes. Generally, it is not recommended. Huh? Sorry. 
Prasanna, you go ahead. I think you're saying. Yeah. So what happens is, uh, uh, Mr. Adebayo, see, thing is like this. Uh, uh, we have uh, we have seen some installations where this silica gel and all is being used, but it is completely dependent on the location of installation. But as Arjun was mentioning, uh, in Nigeria, if you look at it, we don't have uh, very extreme temperatures in the southern part of Nigeria. If you go to uh, Kano, Kaduna, or the northern part of Nigeria, we have certain challenges of high temperatures during summer. Okay, whereas in southern part, we don't generally incur that. So I would I would say uh, use of silica gel, as uh, Arjun was mentioning, it will again spill over and then create you know hot spot in the glass, and challenges could be there. Okay. So uh, the foil could be a better option, but still, you know, at the end of the day, there should be a provision for expansion, thermal expansion of the solar panel on a temperature. Okay, if that is not there, there is a possibility of getting a crack in the panel or the structure will get weakened. Both of those will happen and this will show up to us at a hermiton period of time. Because in the regular days, we won't have a problem. When hermiton comes, the wind flow is more. That time, this all results will come up and show us to us. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Arjun, I just had a, a follow up question to that. So what do we recommend then uh, as the ideal substrate for something like a car park? What would the best material be? Yes. Yes, I uh, for ideal car park, I think uh, we should leave some gap between the modules even though we get small rain or small uh, light below the modules. Uh, we should leave some space uh, or it uh, absolutely we don't want any rain or any sunlight uh, back the modules. Then we can use a aluminum strip what uh, now these days the people are using. Uh, we can use that, but we should uh, uh, take proper uh, precautions while designing the structure. Uh, this will this the, uh, if you close uh, all the modules, then the wind load on the modules will be high that by transfer to the structure. So proper care should be designed while designing the structure. Other than that, yes, they can use aluminum strip to cover that gap. Thanks. Thanks. Sir. Any other questions from our guests? Yeah, and this is Ram here. Uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation. Team. I have a question, you know, uh, mentioned the PID resistance is an important role in this uh, part. I think we should demonstrate one of the panel uh, drawing, you know, if you see the panel drawing, it shows the grounding connection, right? It is only one side of the panel, it shows the grounding connection. Is there a hole on the other side or can you guys even add the grounding cable to the panel so that the lower Whoever installed it, he knows the importance of the grounding. Shra, uh, uh, this Arjun again. Yes, our module contain two ground holes, both sides on long side of the frame, both the sides. Okay. And and if you notice, there will be a symbol, a ground symbol below that hole. Uh, so that is the indication that yes, from that hole, you should ground the modules to the next module. All the basically all the frames should be grounded one next to the each other. But my question is you have the whole provision for both the ends, right? Yes, both the ends. Okay. In the, draw, in the panel drawing it shows only one side, it is written there. Normally you put a, if if you want me to share the screen. No, no problem. I, I think it's uh, drawing is it's only representing what we have see. We have uh, mounting holes on two sides of the module, right? But generally okay. we show one side of the module. It's okay. <laughs> but it is on the yeah, both side. Grounding is on both, both sides. But it's with a simple mark uh, punched in that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, please. Okay, please, uh, please. Yeah. Um, I would like to find out this. Uh, this is in terms of the grounding of the panels. Okay. Now, can one tie the grounding an existing earthen or lighting protection system, or is it a needs to be provided for the panels? But why I'm asking this is 
because uh, I have experienced a situation whereby it was tied to the existing grounding system. But each time there is a lightning flash, the inverter within the building gets damaged. I don't know if you get my question. Uh, uh, I, sorry, hope I, I, I think I think yeah. I think. Uh, let me uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You are asking then when the, whether the grounding can be connected to the common grounding of that building. Yes. Exactly. Yes. 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 We should not connect. We should not connect to the common grounding. And it is also recommended that the grounding of solar panels and the inverter is should be also be different. So all the DC side should be grounded to one terminal and all the AC side should be terminal to other terminal. And these two grounding should not connect to the house to, uh, house grounding or the industry grounding. There should be completely three different groundings for this. And for lighting arrester also, there should be a different grounding. So if you talk about small five kilowatt rooftop plant, the minimum for solar side, we need three groundings, one for AC side, one for DC side. When I say DC side, module grounding, structure grounding can be connected to that. And AC ground, when I say AC grounding, the inverter grounding should be done there. And another grounding is for lightning production. That should be exclusive grounding for lightning production. Why, why, is, why this is required is if, 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 you, if you join all these groundings, then if there is any thunder or lightning, the, uh, the current may flow back to the modules and it will damage your modules or the inverter. Those, there should be a separate grounding for this. Okay, thank you very much. That was very clear. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, I, we have a question from uh, Mr. Moses. Uh, if you could please go ahead. Mr. Moses, you are still uh, muted. If you can just unmute yourself. Sorry, forgive me. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can yes. hear you. Yes. Please go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I'm saying that the grounding expansion is not very clear. Uh, you are saying you have three different kind of grounding for AC separate, for this separate and for lighting. How are we going to achieve that, please? Can you please come again? Prasanna, can you repeat for me? Sorry. Yeah, he is asking about uh, you have uh, three different air thing. Um, uh, you know, so one for the AC side, the other for DC side, and third one for the lightning. Okay. Yes. So, uh, is that going to be three separate lines you need to draw and then go into the other thing, or it has to be all connected in one at some place? Because again, cost also matters. That is what I think Mr. Moses says. Am I right, sir? I think you are right. Yes. Uh, no, uh, it should be three parallel paths. We should not join all these three. Uh, yes, you know that yes, modules are outside the field and lightning arrester. If there is any thunder or any lightning strike lightning spark then the current the uh, there should be a huge current which is flowing through that earth strip and that if there is this all earth things are joined together then the current may reverse flow back to your inverter or your modules so it is recommended to make it three parallel paths and that's what that uh, as per iec uh, guidelines it should be three independent paths and even for general housing where you see any uh, a shopping complex or any any malls, the uh, the building earthing will be different and lightning arrester earthing will be different. They will not join these together. So ultimately, they are joined together. So no, there will be a reverse flow. That's what Arjun uh, what Arjun is trying to tell is that the lightning uh, when a lightning strikes, which which happened about three days back in uh, Lagos, uh, we had a huge lightning and thunder happened. Okay, so what, what happens is in those point of times, the lightning arresters takes the uh, lightning and that huge current could go back to the inverter and the panel in certain cases. That time, it will spoil the inverter and the panel. So that is why what, uh, what is a technical recommendation as per the IEC is that it should be separately grounded. The lightning arrester has to separately go and DC side earthing has to separately grow and AC side grounding has to separately go. That is the ideal way of doing it, sir. Okay. okay. So again, what happens is we do some local, uh, you know, uh, uh, changes in it because of cost saving or something. But 
as per the iec standards what happens when the lightning strikes it definitely goes back to the inverter and to the panel also if that goes back then it will it will it will fail our panel and the inverter which is going to be serious that is what it has to have a three separate connections ideally thank you welcome sir Uh, thank you, Arjun. I just wanted to uh, add on a question to this since we've been discussing lightning. Uh, are there any special uh, measures that we have to take during the monsoons? I think Nigeria also receives, uh, especially the southern part, quite a heavy monsoon. Uh, any special uh, tips for the monsoon? Uh, as far as the system is concerned, solar system, uh, nothing special is required, but before the monsoon we should always check the spds which is there in uh, dcdb and acdb they were they are in a good shape or not uh, uh, spd should be checked before the monsoons and if it is they are go they are good then uh, light lightning part can take by uh, spd uh, other than that there is nothing uh, special required to take from the solar side I would say I would add on a little bit on this uh, vinyl on uh, in terms of uh, harmaton uh, for the ECOWAS region, the sub-Saharan region. Uh, if you see the wind speeds used to be very severe and it is highly dusty and stormy during about two to three months of time. During this period, before this period, I would always suggest we should always check the torque, uh, torque checking of the fasteners in the solar panel system at least once in a year uh, because when we go for a higher and higher systems and a higher altitude systems, automatically the wind speeds are much, much higher. So when it goes to a, a larger system, definitely the tarking has to be definitely checked every year before the Harmaton starts. Noted, noted. Thanks, Prasad. Yes, yes. Thanks, Arjun. Any other questions from our guests? Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah, this is uh, Wale Ayola from Nigeria. Yes, sir, please go Hello. ahead. Hello, Mr. Wale. Yeah, Mr. Wale, good afternoon. Yeah. Please go ahead with your question, sir. I mean, Mr. Prasanna, good afternoon, sir. You are doing good a good job sir. here in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah sure, good sir. So, here, uh, the, the, please, the question I have is this. And uh, there is uh, one particular kind of panel from Japan. Is uh, that's what I experienced. Uh, I, we we had this experience on that panel, and I want you to to explain why this happened. You know, this panel. We look at the panel. The dial the diode on the panels seems to be okay, no issue with it. But the panel are just not bringing any supply again. And these are panel that that were brought in from Japan. So what could be the problem? Some of them are supplying three volts. Some of them are not even supplying anything at all. And we look at the cells. Physically, they are not, they don't look damaged. So what could be the problem? Thank you. So uh, it may be, it may be the uh, interconnecting copper, which is coming out from the module to the junction box. Maybe there, there may be some disconnection there. This you can, this you can check by, uh, by opening the uh, uh, junction box, but I think it's not recommended uh, unless the manufacturer opens the junction box. Uh, from the side, you, you, it's recommended you should not open the box, but if you feel that the warranty is gone, everything is gone, then you can open the packing uh, junction box and check whether the copper which is coming out from the module, from the, from the silicon solar cells, are connecting to the junction box. Yes. Uh, with that, you will get to know. Yeah, to continue, Arjun. Uh, so what he is trying to tell is there are two types of uh, 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 junction boxes. One is called as a potted junction box. We we use a potted junction box. What happens is we completely fill that with a uh, you know a resin kind of a stuff which completely seals the junction box. Okay. So our junction boxes. Yeah. There will be two junction boxes. One is half potted and another is full potted. And, and if it is half potted, yes, we can see the copper. If it is full potted, we cannot see the copper. It is completely filled with resin. 
now in full ported we can't do anything it just if you're not getting any power we can't do anything it just uh, there is some uh, loose connection or there is there, some disconnection between copper uh, between uh, bussing copper and output cables if it is half ported then we can open that cap and we can measure the voltage between the extreme ends there will be four wires coming out from the module uh, four copper wires coming out from the module into the junction box there by the extreme ends you can check the voltage if that is working then uh, the diodes in between got damage if that is not working then there is something to do with within the laminate within the laminate surface that is under the glass which we can't repair at the site or uh, uh, even manufacturer cannot repair that uh, Mr. Mr. Adewale, one more I'm, I wish to add on Arjun's part uh, is that uh, completely it is manufacturer dependent. In case of renuses, uh, we we never uh, accept opening of the junction box or yes. making any modifications on the junction box or on the panel. If anything is done, the warranty goes void because it is it is done in a so much such a sophisticated manner, completely automated. So there is no point it will have a damage in our panels. But the panel, what you are referring is a third party panel. This third party panel, you need to check with the manufacturer whether you can inspect the junction box on your own. If not, yes. kindly contact the seller. He is responsible for doing it. If diodes are intact, if the panel surface is intact and bus bars are looking intact, then it is the manufacturer has to uh, give you an authorization to open the junction box. It is a common industry practice, sir. Yes. We should not uh, uh, do any any repair work at this site without manufacturer's knowledge. Thank you. Any other guests would like to ask question? I think uh, we will uh, wrap up then. Uh, we've got a few uh, guests asking us about the recording of this webinar. Yes, we will be posting it on our website and making it available to all of you by email as well. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you may ask us now or you can also please write to us or contact Prasanna and uh, we'll definitely get back to you. Prasanna, if you would like to add something to wrap up. Yeah, I would like to thank uh, uh, all the participants and the organizers uh, team from India and uh, especially Mr. Sigana Daju for giving his valuable time today and people like Mr. Ram, Mr. Adewale, Mr. Uh, Adebayo and Mr. Emmanuel for uh, actively participating in the webinar and all other friends. Uh, a very lot of thanks to you. And today uh, we have the first in uh, class series of the webinars we have scheduled and run through. And we are future having a plans to get into importance of IEC certification and we have other topics like, you know, solar water pumping because Renuses have some special purpose panels for water pumping application. <laughs> Apart from that, we have one more topic we are thinking about getting in is a conventional solar panel versus new development of solar panel like, you know, flexible solar panel by facial solar panels. So we will be, you can expect uh, wonderful topics and uh, excellent experts like Mr. Adaju and Mr. Arjun and other team members to join us. Uh, so we will, we will see you soon. And if you have any questions, as Vinal mentioned you, you can write to us, talk to us. We are always accessible and uh, available to you.